Thank you for the opportunity to address this uh, very important virtual tour. I want to start uh, this journey from the point of CO2. We know this is the single biggest part of radiative forcing that's causing climate change. It's 50 percent, and it's also the 50 percent that's very persistent. The CO2 stays in the atmosphere. Uh, the first half stays for a uh, hundred years, and then it temporarily gets stored in the oceans and in the terrestrial sinks. The second 50 percent stays up in the atmosphere for 5,000 to a million years, a very, very persistent glo global warming gas. We have to solve the CO2 problem, but it's going to take us time to do that. In the meantime, we also have to start the non-CO2 50%. This is the fast 50%, and it is comprised of the HFCs that the Montreal Protocol can address, and we'll come back to that on our tour. It is comprised of uh, methane, very powerful greenhouse gas, tropospheric ozone, and then aerosols, in particular black carbon soot. We need to buy time from the non-CO2 side. And if we were to use existing technology, not new, existing technology, we could remove half of the radiative forcing from the non-CO2 side. And we could buy about 40, maybe even 50 years of delay, uh, equal to what the, the CO2 contribution would be in that period. This is a very important safety valve or insurance policy for the world. To cut the emissions from the non-CO2 side, you need technology and then you need a governance system that the world can agree to to bring down these pollutants. With HFCs, we are incredibly fortunate to have as the governance system the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. Montreal Protocol is the best environmental treaty the world has ever created. It has universal subscription, 196 parties. Those parties for 23 years have phased out nearly 100 damaging chemicals that warm the climate and destroy the ozone layer. And they've phased those chemicals out by almost 100%. We can measure that. The scientists can go out with their satellites and with their other monitors and say, you in the Montreal Protocol have complied with every promise that you've made for 23 years. That's an incredible accomplishment for anyone, anywhere, and for an international treaty. It's, uh, it's almost magical. As the treaty has done its job phasing out these chemicals, it has had this incredible additional benefit in saving the climate system. And in fact, all the efforts to address the fluorocarbons have ended up solving amount of the climate challenge that we face that otherwise would be equal to CO2. Now let me repeat that. CO2 has warmed the planet by about 1.6 watts per square meter. If we had not addressed the fluorinated gases through the Montreal Protocol and through earlier voluntary and national efforts, we would have put into the system the same amount, 1.6 watts per square meter, maybe even more. And we would be beyond every tipping point that every scientist has imagined. We would be in an irreversible climate situation. So Montreal Protocol has saved the world for the moment. The question today on this tour is, what else can the Montreal Protocol do? And the parties here, uh, I'm speaking from Bangkok, Thailand, uh, November 2010. And the island states have come forward first and said, we would like the Montreal Protocol to do more for climate protection. We would like them to phase out HFCs. Let me phrase that even more carefully, to phase down the high GWP HFCs. There are some that look like they may be worth keeping, that could be very good for the climate system, and they have no impact on ozone. So let's say we'll keep some of the, the ones at the lower end of climate impact. The islands have been joined this year by the North American parties, that's Mexico, Canada, and the United States, who have also said, 
We agree. Let's phase down these chemicals. The European Union have said, great idea, we'll join. Japan, many, many other parties uh, have announced this week that they like this idea. There are others who are still struggling with how they would do this, and they're going a little more slowly. But I will predict that the Montreal Protocol will phase down high GWP HFCs in the next year, maybe two. The world needs this so much that the Montreal Protocol will be given this task very soon. The leaders of the world will demand the Montreal Protocol continue its climate protection and continue saving the planet. Thank you.